The extracellular matrix is a network of non-living tissue that provides support to the cell. The role of the ECM in animals is similar to the cell wall of plants. It provides structure and support to the cell wall as, as well as providing a pathway for communication. The ECM is also important in the healing process. The extracellular matrix is what makes up tendons, ligaments, and bones, and muscles. The ECM in tendons and ligaments have specialized proteins that can be stretched to allow the ligament or tendon to do its job. The extracellular matrix is made up of three major classes of molecules, structural proteins, specialized proteins, and protoglycans. The main structural protein in the ECM is collagen. Collagen forms strong fibers outside the cell and accounts for about half of the total protein in the human body. Some of the specialized proteins that are in the ECM are fibrillin, fibronectin, and laminin. The types of specialized proteins vary based on each individual cell. These specialized proteins are bound to receptor proteins called integrins that are built into the plasma membrane. These integrins go through the plasma membrane and bind on the inside of the cell to proteins that are attached to microfilaments. This allows the inside and outside of the cell to interact, thus the name integrin. The last class of molecules in the ECM are proteoglycans. Proteoglycans are made up of a protein core bonded with long chains of repeating disaccharides. The ECM is located outside of the cell, but it is attached to proteins inside the cell membrane that are then attached to the microfilaments on the inside of the cell, allowing the ECM to interact with other molecules to support the cell from the outside. The ECM is very important in the function of muscles, ligaments, tendons, and bones. It allows the cells that make up these body parts to interact and stretch a little, but still keep them bonded together. The ECM is vital to movement in our body. The intercellular junctions of a cell are the connections between neighboring cells that form tissues. In plants, the cell wall is rigid and makes it hard to join the cells together. Due to this, the cell wall has channels in them called plasmodesmata. Cytosol, the chemical that makes up cytoplasm, passes through the plasmodesmata and connects the two cells. This forms one continuous cytoplasm that runs throughout the cells. The plasma membrane forms around these junctions and makes one continuous membrane. This union allows water and other smaller particles to flow freely from cell to cell. Some macromolecules are able to be transferred from cell to cell by following the fibers of the cytoskeleton of the cell. These plasmodesmata allow the plant to form tissues and transfer important materials through it. In animals, there are three types of intracellular junctions. They are most common in epithelial tissue that lines the external and internal surfaces of the body, like skin. The three types of junctions are tight junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions. At tight junctions, the plasma membranes of the adjoining cells are pressed together and bonded by strands. These strands are created by proteins in the cell. The more strands there are, the greater the junction will be. This creates a firm seal around the cells so that vital liquids can't escape. The functions of tight junctions are to keep the cells together, maintain polarity, and prevent molecules from escaping. Desmosomes hold cells together in sheets. Different proteins help to anchor the desmosomes and then they connect with the other cell. The protein keratin forms intermediate filaments that anchor the desmosomes into the cytoplasm of the cell. The adhesion points where the two cells come together are made of the two proteins desmogline and desmocolon. The cells come together by homophilic bi binding. Gap junctions make cytoplasmic channels between neighboring cells. They are very similar to the plasmodesmata in plants. They are made from different types of proteins depending on which animal they are in. They join the cytoplasm of the two cells so smaller molecules and particles can be transferred. Gap junctions are pr also prevent the molecules from escaping into the space outside the cells. If intercellular junctions didn't exist, the cells would be unable to work together to form tissues and would have to be isolated from one another. The cell wall is the extracellular structure of plant cells. It is similar to the extracellular matrix in animals. The exact composition of the cell wall depends on the specific type of plant, but the basic design is the same for all plants. 
It is generally made of microfibrils made of the polysaccharide cellulose embedded in a matrix of other polysaccharides and proteins. This design is similar to the steel reinforced concrete. The cellulose is like the rebar embedded in the concrete that provides support and structure. A new plant cell first secretes a thin and flexible wall called the primary cell wall. Some cells then add a secondary cell wall between the plasma membrane and the primary wall. This secondary cell wall is very rigid and strong. Wood, for example, is made up of mostly secondary cell walls. In between the primary walls of different plants is the middle lamella, which consists of polysaccharides called pectin. Pectin is very sticky and glues adjacent cells together. The function of the cell wall is to maintain the shape of each individual plant cell and prevent excessive water intake. When you look at the plant as a whole, cell walls have an emergent property of holding the entire plant up against the force of gravity. The cell wall interacts with the inter intercellular junctions to allow materials to pass through it. This allows cells to work together as an organism instead of just functioning as individuals. An interesting fact about the cell wall is that it acts as a pressure mechanism to prevent the cell from taking in too much water. This prevents the bursting of cells in an environment where osmotic balance is difficult to maintain.